Hello, hello. So thank you again for your email. Really great, great insight through there and questions that you're asking. And um, I have some ideas that I think could be supportive. So I'm gonna uh, go through that in a video today. And um, I wrote out some notes for you um, based on your questions. And um, we could call this video uh, Making Friends with Your Left Brain uh, for, for creatives. So um, what I'm gonna share with you uh, is this is not stuff that came naturally to me either um, as, as uh, somebody that's more of a divergent kind of thinker. Um, and so, um, you know, as, uh, more creative people living in a <laughs> culture that has a little more emphasis on, on uh, left brain activities, if we can, not that we could really simplify it like that, but I think you see what I'm saying. Um, yeah, making friends with it in a way that uh, is aligned with your values and works for you. So that's, that's where this is, um, everything I'm going to share with you today is coming from. And uh, when you said my mind feels like a tornado, <laughs> uh, my, uh, my mom often quotes when I was a kid, I would say, math feels like a tornado in my head. So um, I, I, I hear you on that, the mental organization piece. So, um, you know, the other question, the questions I pulled out from what you wrote, what are really, I, I saw a few, but really I'm focused on these two main ones. What are practical tools I can use on a daily basis to be more consistent? Um, and what are practices I can implement if I find that I have challenges remembering things? So um, just one thing as a, as a general piece about memory uh, or consciously trying to think of things um, that takes more energy and effort and so we want to look at habit formation because ultimately habits um, <laughs> for better or worse right they um, you know you make your habits and then they make you uh, whatever you're practicing you become we're always practicing something and so once it's a habit it's embodied you don't have to think about it um, it becomes like a muscle memory, and uh, right, and we know that from habits that we didn't that that can't, that we started doing in a way that wasn't maybe uh, as intentional, and you know we all have that. So you know it takes a little more focus in the beginning, but then after doing it for a bit, it um, just becomes muscle memory. So that can take some of the pressure off the intentional uh, memory piece. So we'll look at that today in this video. Um, so essentially what I'm going to do, this is, it's, yeah, it's basically a training on <laughs> making friends with your, with your left brain. Um, and I'll share some of the principles that I've learned. Um, and then, and then at the end, um, just, you know, recommend some really specific tools and practices and things that you could test out this week before before we meet uh, next week. Okay, so first piece, we talked about that. First piece is, <laughs> is a, um, a little bit synesthetic. I don't know if you know synesthesia. Um, uh, substituting where, you know, you have a kind of creative mind and you uh, substitute one sense for another. A friend of mine used to would play music and made a song that was a uh, chocolate cake with blue frosting. And, um, you know, so this is a little bit maybe synesthetic or I don't know, maybe it's just poetic. But um, one of the principles I have is verbify the stuck, noun the chaos. Verbify the stuck, noun the chaos. I'm just going to write it down. Okay, 
So, so the idea is um, when we're stuck, when we feel like we're stuck, we want to make fluid something that we want to shift and bring the properties of fluidity to that. What we're starting to talk about more is uh, this other piece of now in the chaos. So I'm hearing, you know, uh, tornado, right? Sense of mental tornado. And so that piece we want to make solid, make solid that which we want to stick. How do we make things solid? Right? How do we make things solid? Well, let's turn to uh, nature, of course. Look at some of the elements. Um, from my lens, uh, Earth is a more solid um, seeming element. So anything that has more of a quality of form. So uh, these, are, these are just principles to understand and then we'll show how share how they apply. So if we want to make something more solid, like I want to be able to do this practice more regularly, um, I want to um, feel like I have a more consistent routine or schedule, right? So what are some of the things that make things solid? Repetition. Repetition, ritual, nouns, basically, right? Things, objects, um, physical things that you could touch. Um, if we think about communication, writing would be more solid, fixing, than uh, speech, right? I could say something uh, verbally and it, it has more of that divergent quality, but if I write it down, then it's like, there's that word, right? And we know that for, again, for better or worse, um, the way, you know, people interpret texts and it's like, well, there's the word. And, um, so there's a quality of uh, fixing something that maybe wasn't actually meant to be fixed. Um, and that, that can happen with the teachings and things. But in this case, we actually want to use that to, you know, to your benefit. So writing things down. Photographs are also um, ways of making things more solid, right? So um, I studied photography and, you know, you've got the vastness, right? The, <laughs> right? It's just, it's everything. Everything's everything. And um, with photography, you put a frame around a, you make a picture and put a frame around it. So uh, framing things. Um, what else? Ways to make things solid. Uh, a place. Having a place for something, a physical location. You know, um, that brings a quality of ground. There is a place for my instruments. Uh, for example, you, know, you could say my instruments are in that place um, a space right a place or that would be more space maybe uh, a place might be um, Claremont California right um, or the grocery store when I walk in the grocery store or when I go to whatever whatever regular thing I always walk down that street and then ah Right? I, I, I maybe tagged something in my mind to a place. Um, and that actually, that um, is a, it, it is kind of, it is how we think as a species more uh, spatially because we, we had to. Um, so that's a useful thing. That's really helpful for memory. Um, yeah, we can talk more about that later but using location people who are like masters at memory um, that's what they do they imagine a house with different rooms and correspond things to that you could physically make it right um, so these are ways using place is helpful for memory too um, other thing 
how do I make things solid? So we're also talking about structure here and the, the natural structure. So I, th I think what happens for a lot of us that identify as more creative is maybe we're in a structure that was that felt restrictive and um, and so it's like uh, no structure um, and and kind of uh, blame the restriction on structure itself rather than the quality of that particular structure and um, so structure can be supportive uh, flowers have structure um, they have fractal and there's a structure to it um, our bones are <laughs> supportive structure. They're alive. They're very much alive, um, and uh, and are able to move. But they're structure. So um, yeah, building in structures that feel supportive rather than restrictive. Um, or if there's no structure, you're kind of like a puddle. So that's what we're looking at here. Um, other piece what else making things solid uh, naming things giving things a label <laughs> and so again like these are all things that you could see um, <laughs> what happens in the world when they run amok um, but there's ways that we can we can use them and so when we say um, you know categorize things and label them in a way that actually just helps us be organized and we know it's not really true, it's just a model to help us. Um, yeah, that's a good principle. Another um, last piece I'll speak about with how to make things solid, container. Having containers for things, this is like so huge. Um, and I'll, I'll give more examples later of specific containers, um, but like, get you one here like, okay like these things these baskets uh, we actually found this <laughs> actually found that one. Like, physical containers are oh my goodness they're unbelievably helpful um, I didn't realize how much that was true and uh, I had a moment where I realized oh wow I it's like don't have containers for things for things for uh, time um, so just as a principle having containers for things and it's a learning to kind of figure out well, what's the size of the container and um, what do I put in there or not uh, but yeah that's another another good principle of how to make things solid, qualities of solid things. Okay, so now we'll talk about another thing that is, uh, it's huge, this is huge. <laughs> I'm like, why did nobody, nobody tell me this one? Um, this is a big one. So to answer the question, how do I become more consistent? Um, my answer to that is that, this was like through my own discovery, uh, I call it learning loops. So, draw that on. Okay. Okay. Learning loops. So, what is, what's a learning loop? It is a cycle of action and rest. One cycle, it includes action, it includes rest. So I'm just gonna draw that. So, action. and rest so um, one of those creates a learning loop and this looks two-dimensional um, it's on a dry erase board but really what happens when you keep completing them 
you actually get the spiral. how things change. So with the learning loops, so the action is whatever the thing that you, um, you know, whatever you've decided to do, and then rest, not doing it, right? So let's say it's um, like, I want to practice a song once a day, for example, let's say. And you, uh, you know, at this time, whatever, you link it to something. So you have your practice, you do that once a day, and then you, you've done it, you let go of it, and you rest, maybe do something else, you go to sleep, next day, you know, come forward and do the practice again, rest. So that's a cycle. And the idea with the learning loops is that you want to focus on frequency over intensity so the more important thing is that you have you want to maximize the number of learning loops that you do rather than the intensity of the action because then you will need to match the intensity of the action with intensity of rest so let me give an example let's say it's you know, if, if the action is, let me just say, uh, like exercise or something, right? The workout. If as a baseline, there's days where I don't at all, maybe saying, and, and uh, maybe I'm capable of working out for two hours or something. But if I went from zero to that, it's like, I'm going to need, I, I can't sustain that as long. I'm going to have uh, fewer um, loops. So like, okay, if I'm thinking that way, I'm trying to maximize it. I do two hours and then the next day, okay, I'll do two hours again, right? And then the next day it's like, well, I did a lot, you know, I'm kind of tired and maybe I won't do it today. Um, right? So a lot and then a lot and then it's like, yeah. So instead we want to look at starting with, this is key, uh, thinking about the lowest, uh, when you're in your lowest, the low, right? If you think of, okay, I've got a lot of energy, I can do things, or when you're like, I don't feel like it, right? Or I'm just tired. Um, what is, what could you do from that place, right? So maybe it would be five minutes or 10 minutes or 15 minutes whatever it feels realistic to you it doesn't matter what it is if it's two minutes when I was first doing my uh, Schroth exercises for scoliosis I um, I wanted to do it every day for a year I knew that it would help me and uh, that that's a pretty big commitment um, for at least a year I wanted to do it every day and um, when I went into it, it wasn't just the exercise, it brought up a lot of emotions for me. Um, but I was like, this is gonna help me if I do it, I know it. And I was like, okay, if I really am like, <laughs> afraid to enter the room with the dragons, um, and I'm like, I don't want to, or I'm really tired or scared of what's gonna come up when I do it, what could I say to myself at that point? Hey, it's only this. For me, um, it was just that I did it at all. It could be one minute, it could be 30 seconds. So I actually didn't even give myself an amount. I just gave myself that I did it. So some days I held it for a bunch of minutes, um, which is a lot for those exercises. Um, and some days it was a few seconds and then I was, uh, it brought up stuff. And so I was like, caring for myself after that and it was like okay that's enough you know that's enough for today that's all right we'll come back tomorrow and um and I come back the next day and sometimes it was like yeah it was just chill so um it varied but oh <laughs> there we go anyway it varied so um 
Yeah, it varied, but I didn't vary. So um, the other key with that was that um, I didn't go, oh, I did it five minutes today. So tomorrow I won't need to do it at all. Do that. So you just keep it at whatever the baseline is. So if you choose, um, you know, I'm gonna practice for 10 minutes, you know, I'm gonna practice a song for 10 minutes each day, I'm making something up. Um, then, you know, at that point, then you're gonna say, um, you know, you, even if you get to 10 minutes, you think, oh, I could do more. Do not, <laughs> do not save that fuel, leave some fuel in the tank, save it for next time um, when you're like, oh, I don't know if I can. And you go, well, it's only 10 minutes. So that's learning loops, uh, frequency over intensity. Um, you want to maximize the loops. So that's that. And uh, bringing up the bottom rather than chasing the highest. Um, other piece about the learning loop. So the learning loop looks like this. And we're going to talk about some, another shape that is not a learning loop. So action, action and rest, I'll say what they both are not. They are both not thinking about action. So thinking about action isn't action, right? Um, should I, you know, do, you know, play this now or da da da, da different than, act than actually doing it. Um, and thinking about it, also not rest, isn't rest. It's not very good rest. So um, what we have on the other side is a different shape and it looks like this. It's a black hole. Thinking about action. Thinking about action. So the thing about that is it's, it is very expensive energy-wise, energetically expensive, thinking about action. The, the brain takes up so much energy and oxygen thinking. I mean, it's like, it really does. So um, this, there's not a lot of thinking going on um, there. And so, and the other piece is that it's, uh, it's regenerative. It's regenerative for your energy. So you do something and then you, you, you know, your body has the experience of expression that moves the energy out. And then you have also the sense of completion which also is uh, like settling. I did, oh, I did that energy out, I did that. And then at some point, especially when things are shared or are shared out, eventually there's energy that comes back in um, from feedback. Somebody, ah, they saw my song, you know, um, or whatever it is. And, um, you know, yeah, you, you, you get it back at some point in some way. Um, with thinking about action, um, it's the opposite. There, and there doesn't get to be an expression, um, so you, you never get relief, basically. Um, you don't get relief from expression, from completion, there's no completion, um, and you also don't get feedback at, at any point because it's just in abstract land. Um, so I call that the energetic, it's a, it's a black hole for your energy and it's exhausting. It's exhausting. Um, I can only speak about it because I know, because I've experienced it um, and confused thinking about action for action. is not the same. <laughs> um, key pieces of action is like, oh, there's expression. There's expression, uh, physical embodied expression. Um, is a, is a big piece of, of action, at least for me. So, versus thinking. The other piece is, uh, let me just make one distinction here, which is that um, thoughtfulness, thoughtfulness that is uh, creative in nature, that, uh, that's, that's a great thing, and that is also part of action. So for example, 
before actually like right now in this moment i am doing the action of speaking expressing making this video for you that you requested and um but what i did before that is you can see this is what i'm looking at here is i wrote some notes so when i was doing that you know that was also action it was part of it it was a thoughtfulness a generating creative ideas thinking about what you wrote and the questions you had how i could um, best support best support you with that so you know that's part of action and planning is part of can be an action and all of that um, so distinguishing that thoughtfulness that's a creative and generative in nature versus thought that is more like second guessing doubting self-limiting um you know things like things that would be like should i do this um i don't know if you know should i do it should i not do it uh you know kind of like wavering <laughs> kinds of thinking um or or sort of self-limiting i don't know how to do this You could see even like if I'm trying to even think of that, I just get into this like uh, place. So um, the other, another one that's an example of that black hole <laughs> thinking is uh, telling yourself stories um, that are like worst case scenario type of stories about what's, oh, if I do this and then they don't like it and these kind of things. So, um, you know, all of that, there's a, a weightedness of the past in it. Um, and so it's pretty, you know, again, with the energy, it's, it's tiring. It's really draining. Um, and it's difficult to do, it's difficult to do things that are new and fresh um, when you have the weight uh, of the past. And any, as soon as it's a, uh, a thought it's the past so um, so that's that so what could we say about that if you're like well but that happens sometimes no problem um, that's just make sure this is going yeah so what could we do basically <laughs> we're trying to spend as little time over here as possible um, so what we can do is when you notice yourself over there, this is what I do, um, when I notice myself over there, I just, just make a choice, come back to this one and make a choice about which of those you want to do. So if I'm thinking about action, I have a, and I go, oh, wait a second. Um, if I'm thinking about it in a way that's not thoughtful and like creative kind of way, but um, more, like <laughs> constrict um so wait a minute can i do the action right now like actually this now this moment do i want to do that and if not i am choosing to rest <laughs> i'm choosing to rest so if you find yourself here just choose either one actually do the action or choose to rest yeah, it doesn't matter which one, but basically just get yourself from the black hole <laughs> over to the spiral. Okay, so that's that. And uh, now I'll share some tools with you. One tool based on all the ideas, principles, qualities, different things that I just talked about. So one, let's look at schedule. Okay, schedule. All right, schedule. So one thing you could do, this is something that um, I kind of, there was a period of time where I was doing it all the time when I first started and then um, there's periods where I kind of 
drop it away a little because I want things to be a little more fluid and then there's periods where you know it, sh it shifts I choose to shift it depending on what qualities I'm needing if you're wanting more of that sense of consistency and a sense of ground then uh, doing it all the time for a little while until it, it's more in you and then you can kind of shift with it um, could be a good idea and that is planning tomorrow today and just testing it out so I'd recommend testing it out for like a week so plan tomorrow today and I'll explain about that So, uh, let's say, test. So, choose a period of time. Uh, I think a week is pretty good. You just test it and kind of see, do I like that, you know? Um, some kind of truck over there. You know, do I like that or not? Or maybe I like this part of it, but not this part. Or then you can work with it. So, um, what that looks like, you find an example. These are one of my old um, kind of notebooks that's pretty beaten up. <laughs> uh, okay, so here's, <laughs> you could kind of see um, what that looks like. So I actually wrote out, can you see that? Yeah, you can see the numbers. Uh, breakfast, shower, walk, morning practice, um, you know, call with this person, um, right? And I wrote it out in, in increments of however much time it took, you know, uh, exercise, 30 minutes, morning practice, an hour, um, kind of thing. And at the beginning, it takes a little time because you're, uh, you're kind of guessing. Maybe you're not exactly sure how long things take. So, um, you know, you just start uh, the night before. So, you know, right before you're going to go to sleep and you think about the next day and you write it out. And if you haven't done it before, it might feel kind of weird or like, ah, am I constraining myself? Um, it doesn't mean that you, you know, it, it, you wrote it on the paper, so it doesn't mean that you have to stick to it or something it's it's learning a, a new way to work with structure and find your own autonomy in it so um you know it's just a, kind of an experiment a creative experiment so planning tomorrow today um and it might take like 20 minutes uh for the first couple times and then eventually it'll take you like two minutes right um, but what it does is get you kind of thinking about containers a little bit more. It actually helped me with um, hydration and food because I'd realized, oh, right, this transit time, not so much anymore, but at the time, right, it, it would take me time to get from here to there and I'm going to be hungry for lunch around then. And so it got me thinking a little more ahead about planning for myself in those ways and so that I wouldn't end up um, with a starving feeling, as I, as I say. Um, yeah, so that's plan tomorrow today. Another is, this isn't something I do, but my partner does it, and um, she finds it super helpful and has had difficulty with um, sometimes remembering appointments and, and things like that, and uh, it's really helped her. So I'll just offer it from, from, you know, from her which is having a physical calendar that's big. Um, it's called a desk blotter. I'm not sure why. <laughs> uh, physical calendar and uh, star stickers. So they could be any kind of sticker, but that's what she uses. And the idea is you write down your action, you physically peel off and you have a day, you know, you write down what the action is. Um, you have a regular time where you're going to look at it. Anytime you agree to do something, you write it down there plan to do something write it and then daily you at the end of the day look and see did I do it and you peel off 
the star sticker or whatever sticker, put it on there, and the kinesthetic, um, there's the move, yeah, the kinesthetic move of that and the, like, seeing the sparkly thing, uh, is just part of giving a little bit of a, of a brain, brain boost, um, and completing the cycle. So, yeah, uh, desk blotter and stickers. that sounds more fun than my plan tomorrow today in a notebook uh, thing you can you can try that one instead okay so that's two uh, of those next piece is containers right so I mentioned the containers so um, space containers so like the basket I showed you if you're feeling mentally disorganized want to take a look at your space and um, Boy, have I been resistant to that before. Um, and they're like, it doesn't really make a difference, but like, wow, it makes a big difference. I'm telling you, um, it, it's worth, it's, you know, don't believe me, but it's worth testing out. It's worth testing out. Um, those baskets are everything. Uh, you can organize physical things. Um, it can really, really help with the mental because we're getting that feedback every time we see things in places and it it's a reminder of you know it's like a mirroring so that's one space um write that down so containers time um, <laughs> this is a still a learning curve for me um, this is one of the biggest learning curves for me so uh, as you do the plan tomorrow today if you do that it does really help with with the time so thinking about having a time container around things it doesn't mean it has to be small it could be like I'm gonna hang out with this friend from you know, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. If, if it wants to be that. It doesn't have to be any particular time, but getting the practice of um, just, just noticing, creating the time parameters around things, and it also helps you be more discerning about, right, are there, um, about choosing what things you want to be maybe a little more open-ended or what things you want to just have a big parameter around and what things you actually want a pretty small parameter around because you don't really enjoy it that much so this helps me with um, like if I have some like government agency that I have to call or something like that like that is like one of my very least favorite things to do um so if I, like I used to be like, okay, I'm gonna take this day to do that, you know? And I was like dreading that day. But now I'm like, no, okay. I will make that call inside of this 30 minute block or hour, or sometimes you end up on the phone a long time. Um, but basically, you know, uh, and then if I didn't uh, reach them then, it was like, okay, it moves, it, it moves to the next day. Um, and I thought, but what if I'll never reach them doing that? But actually, um, I find it was like, no, I'd end up not on hold other times. And I don't know, it kind of worked out. So, but just the idea being that, especially if there's something you don't really want to spend a lot of time with, like for me, um, like checking email or something like that, you know, it's like, it's not really, you know, well, that's not maybe as relevant for you, but like just things that aren't enhancing your life as much, but they feel like maintenance kind of things. Um, you know, just being able to put a smaller uh, time parameter around it. So time. And then the last one is activities, right? The things that I do. Um, and with that, it can be helpful kind of going back to the naming sorting, categorizing them, um, 
just testing it out like like for me it's like my you know creative side it's like that sounds not fun um (laughs) but boy it's really helped my organization and you can you know you could draw that's what I do sometimes it's like I color code or draw images of different things it's like yeah this is for my well-being you know these are all the things that are for that and this is for you know this is like oh this is the friend time or you know the models are never true like friend time is well-being right so but you're just creating a container for things so that it's not only the divergent thinking that everything is everything um much as we need more of that we we can the world can use more of it um but if we creative people are to be able to exist (laughs) and bring our gifts um you know we can bring in a little bit of the little bit of the left brain okay in service to the heart mind in service to the heart okay so that's that um the third piece and you know you can you can pause it and point and there's a lot in here um like i said this is basically like a it's like training all right so the third piece is ritual 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 so I think this could be um, could be really powerful for you. So remember, repetition was one of the principles, and so you know, inconsistency, repetition, loop, uh, ritual, some kind of practice that you develop for yourself. Something that, again, is a simple to do when you don't feel like it as much. Um, it could be as simple as you know you light a candle and say an intention and it's something like something like you know my intention is to feel mentally clear today or something like that and uh and you're like you might be like okay but <laughs> what does that really do I'm telling you test it out um, if you set your intention if you ask for help you know, ask for support from ancestor, from the sun, the sky, you know, uh, it's, it's really amazing what, what comes through. Um, but again, don't believe me, just, just test it out. Uh, something that you feel that you would feel called to try some kind of ritual that you could come back to. And what is it that makes it a ritual? Um, well, I guess a few things repetition um but i think what makes it something that could really help is that there's a quality there's a movement there's some kind of movement in it you're speaking you're doing something like lighting a candle or moving in a specific way or you go to that place you know again and again something um you know it could also be like a jar spell you know where you are going around and gathering different things, putting it in a jar, setting your intention to hold in, in that space. Um, so again, there's we find the same things, right? There's a repetition, there's like objects, and there's um, physical movement, and there's something that's like that's a little bit out of the ordinary, um, and there's an emphasis on intention. So having a ritual. So that's three. Or the accountability that you asked about accountability so what are ways that you can experience that you can have that the da- regular daily accountability you said accountability okay so one is with whatever whatever is the thing you want to be doing regularly it could be the ritual um, it could be uh, you know daily uh, uh, performance practice or something like that um, so one is that you have someone that you can tell daily that you've done it just as simple as that um, it could be me it could be you know it could be multiple people 
um, you know, and that's just to kind of send an email off or a message off and say, I did it, <laughs> you know? Um, and you, you know, it can be like that. Uh, so that's one possibility. Um, it's a good idea to have at least one person, I would say. Um, you can also do it with a natural element, you know? Um, tell the sky, like, or the earth. I, yeah, I did this. Um, another possibility is to have regular check-ins with that person, with a person. Um, uh, and that, you know, it could be weekly check-ins with them, uh, daily. Um, again, it, it could be me, 15 minutes, right? Of, uh, yeah, I, I, I did that or I didn't. And if, and, and it could be a space, like let's say it's 15 minutes. Um, and if it's like I didn't, that space could actually be a space for just doing it right there. <laughs> um, I didn't do it before and I'm going to do it now. So that's one. Tell someone. Uh, second is um, announce it. <laughs> announce it to other people and uh, promise an outcome on a certain date. So an example of that could be, um, you know, saying to a friend, I'm going to send you a video of this new song I'm working on uh, on whatever date, right? Um, or by this date, something like that. Um, another thing that could be with that, that I think would be really great for you, would be to make a list of all of the people and the groups who are going to benefit from, from the music that you're making. Um, you know, the activist groups, the um, specific people that you've met um, through, you know, through the course of your journey that that you're hoping that you, that your intention is that your music is is a fuel for for them and their work um, so make a list of them so start there just make a list of all of them that's one and then two would be then um, those are the people you see would benefit from what you're doing Two, then tell them that you're going to gift them something, right? A song, something. Um, oh, that went away again. There we go. Um, yeah, so that's another way, you know, by certain time, right? So that's two. Uh, a third thing is, um, so, all right, so tell someone daily, announce it to others. This isn't actually this isn't really a separate thing. This is kind of back to the learning loops, which is to have a structure for a right the the thing that you're doing that's going to move the needle. So maybe that's practicing and having a structure for that that um, is really easy to do in the lows and just keeping to that each day. You know, so maybe it's a 10 minute practice or I, I don't know time wise, but. Um, yeah, something that's just simple to sustain. Um, so when you plan it, think about sustaining. Uh, make sure the daily thing's easy. <laughs> that's, yes. Um, okay. So that's for accountability. And then um, a few other points on that. One is that, so to, when you talk about solid, so having cement, <laughs> cementing something in place, right? Um, so what are ways you could cement what you're doing? Talking about what you're doing with other people. So we already kind of talked about that for the accountability. And then, then when you, when they know what you're up to, then they kind of, they're like, oh yeah, like I saw, you know, that new thing. I saw the song you put out and man, I, and I loved it, you know, and 
you're getting the feedback and that's part of cementing it so uh, putting it out in relationship is part of the cementing um, another piece is uh, celebration rituals so celebrating um, again simple small easy ways to do it um, things that, that just feel like they give you that you know <laughs> they give you a little the, the dopamine hit basically they give you a little bit of joy um, you know uh, at my house we do uh, like a silly dance basically and you know so that's that um, and then the last piece is um, if you do something different than intended right so I intend to do this I put it in but then I didn't I'm just gonna call it where is it can you see that yeah Okay, neutral why. <laughs> um, so you made a plan to do something, you like made a pretty good plan for it. But again, plan isn't the same as when it occurs. And we wanna understand what the gap is, right? We talked about that, um, unpacking the gap. So part of the key to unpacking the gap is neutral why. Um, so we wanna ask why right? Why was it that I didn't do that? Not from a place of judgment of I should have because I didn't. So obviously I shouldn't have, <laughs> um, right? Whatever was the case. And there, there's something, you know, just unpacking just more as like a, as like a scientist in your own life. Um, and in that, you're in, you end up discovering these patterns and learning a lot about yourself. And it's not, uh, it's not clouded with the eyes of judgment, which is there because it thinks it's trying to help us change. But um, yeah, it, it's, just, uh, it's just misguided, that's all. So um, yeah, it's well-intentioned but misguided. And so we look at the neutral why. So I'll give you an example for me. Um, there was a point when I became really curious about how food affected me years ago. And I noticed that, um, <laughs> I noticed that I didn't feel really well after I ate cream, things with cream in it. So I, um, you know, so I started shifting that and then there was this time when I was meeting a friend at a restaurant and I got in traffic that I wasn't expecting and I ended up being there really late and I ordered this like risotto <laughs> dish and it was good but some risottos don't have cream but this one did and I felt terrible like, really terrible and um and I was just like I asked the neutral why like I know that I don't do well with cream and sometimes it's in risottos and I, I didn't even ask them if it was in this one. Why did I do that? And I realized I got myself to starving feeling because I was like way too hungry. And so from that place, I wasn't really able to make uh, a very um, grounded choice from a place of, you know, more awareness. I was just like food. Uh, and I, I don't know so so that gave me the context of okay if I'm put if I'm in a position where I'm rushing or something so that was like oh let me always bring if I'm so what I started doing was if I'm gonna drive somewhere you know or if there's gonna be times where I might be not eating for longer periods or something I'm always gonna have snacks with me so I never get to that place of starving feeling <laughs> and um, so then you know I'll be able to you know to make um, yeah more more informed you know be able to just choose from a, a calmer place not a like I need to eat something um, yeah so that's one one example of the power the power <laughs> of the neutral why okay so uh, that seems like it was 
yeah, we went for a while. <laughs> this is like a big training, okay. Um, well, hopefully this is helpful to you. Um, this is the, you know, kind of a, there's probably more, but this is a big scope of what I've learned as a creative person making friends with my left brain. And uh, yeah, I hope it serves you and I look forward to uh, talking next week.